Today we're going to be looking at the Sony RSX GS9, the best sound quality radio ever made for car audio. Let's not wait, let's dive into it and start talking about this. This radio is going to be a little bit different than any other radio you've probably seen before. We'll start here with the things that you're used to. It has a remote control. It has a microphone for hands-free calling over Bluetooth. It has a small power plug. You'll notice it's missing a few wires. And also the wires it does have do different things than what you're accustomed to. On this plug we have an orange white which is for illumination. We have a blue white which is remote turn on output. We have a red accessory wire. Then we have a pair of whites, one with a black stripe and a pair of grays, one with a black stripe. Most of the time you'd be using these as speaker outputs to go off to power speakers. This radio, these are actually high level inputs to integrate with another source unit so that you can add this on to an existing radio. The high level input on this has three to 12 volts of input. There's no power in this unit is what I'm getting at. Then inside the box here is a second harness. This is the power supply filter for this as well as the constant 12 volts and ground. This needs to be connected to your battery with the 12 gauge wire. It has a 15 amp fuse in it, which is about 5 amps more than most factory systems allow for. You can go into your fuse box to check to see if you have a 10 amp fuse, and if you do, make sure you run a power out to the battery. You also get a bag of screws, radio extraction pieces, and the owner's manual is available for download online. In case you didn't know, this is a single DIN radio. It is a deep chassis, even though there is no CD player slot on here. And there's a reason for that. Like most single dens, it comes with a mounting cage to slide it into the dash, as well as a trim ring to finish off the look. Let's start with the back of the radio. Going from left to right, the first thing we find at the top here is USB 2. There's actually three USBs on this radio. The FM antenna input, the dual sub RCA output, rear output, front output, all of which are four volt. There's a mounting screw provision for the back. Back. The steering wheel control input and optical output. This optical output is for power amplifiers with optical in. When another device is connected, it may not function properly. Volume controls will not function when using the optical out. The hands-free microphone input, and of course our two power plugs that we just showed you inputs here and here. Let's flip it over and take a look at the front. One of the most striking characteristics of this radio is this brushed aluminum finish here, as well as this giant volume knob that just moves very silky smooth. It doesn't have a it's just, it feels really tight and very purposeful. It is infinite spin. There is some resistance to it. In the middle, you'll notice the near field communication. So that if you have a phone that has NFC, you can just hover the phone over the unit for it to make connection. This little guy right here is the display window. It doesn't have a huge display. It just tells you what you need to keep that nice clean look. As you can notice from the corner over here, this is its selling feature. It is high res, which means it'll play formats such as AAC, WMA, AIFF, ALAC, DSD, WAVE, MP3, and FLAC. You know the buttons across the bottom? All of them are multi-purpose buttons. The first one being source. If you tap it, it'll do its first thing, which is switch between sources. If you press and hold it, it will shut the radio down. Track back or next, play pause, or press the hold for pairing, track up or next going forward. On the opposite side of the radio, we have a a small reset button located here, auxiliary input, USB 1. Now USB 1 and USB 2 can be used for the same thing. Now USB 1 and USB 2 have the same capabilities. They can be used for phones as well as thumb drives with media on them. The micro USB here, however, is a little bit different. This is for high resolution audio. You can plug a computer, a smartphone with the compatible software 
or a digital media player into this. This passes directly through the DAC inside the unit to give you the highest performance of digital analog conversion. And that is done using the ES9018S, which is an acclaimed distortion-free signal processor with unmatched audio clarity. The ES9018, also referred to as the Sabre, is a reference 32-bit audio DAC. According to their website, the reference audio DAC series is the world's highest performance 32-bit audio DAC solution or digital to analog converter targeted for consumer applications such as Blu-ray players, audio pre-amplifiers, AV receivers, and professional applications such as recording system, recording systems, mixer consoles, digital audio workstations. And here are some of the specifications on it. As you can tell, this is a serious piece of hardware that they've installed into this radio. Now uh, let's talk about some of the features built into the radio. With the unit powered up, we can now see that there is a soft white light coming from behind the buttons here, as well as the volume knob. The first source is going to be tuner. If we press and hold the source button, as we said, it'll shut it off. And you can see those lights disappear and your clock is displayed. With the unit back on, we have FM1 through 3 and AM1 and 2. If we hold our arrows up and down, we can seek through the stations. The unit comes with a remote control, as we said earlier. And one of the functions of the remote control is to gain access into the radio. As you see, it's very minimalistic on the buttons. But that is not the only way to access the features. There's also a smartphone app, which we'll cover. Well, let's start with the remote control. Across the top of the remote control, you have source, menu, or sound, and mode. Let's take a look at the sound. You press it once, it'll bring us into that menu. Then you'll notice there's up and down arrows and an enter key. The first stop is subwoofer. If we select enter, we have sub level, high pass frequency, low pass mode, low pass frequency, sub phase, sub level. If you select enter, it'll take you into that page and then you can use the up and down arrows to change your value. There's also a back arrow located here next to the source. High pass frequency, select enter. Default on most features is off because they're expecting you to take this out to a DSP or an EQ or something along those lines. If you toggle down, it will cycle through your crossover points. Back arrow, low pass mode, enter, mono, stereo, low pass frequency, enter, down arrow, 50, 63, 79, 99, 125, 158, 198, 250, just like the high pass frequency. Sub phase, enter, normal or reverse. So that's zero or 180 degrees. And then back to sub level. Hit the back arrow to exit that particular menu. Toggle down, custom position, select enter. This is going to be for your time alignment. Select enter. Now you can enter in your distance to set your delay. You have front left, front right, rear left, rear right, subwoofer. Select the back arrow when done. Position presets. These are predetermined for you. Select enter. You have front position. Enter is off. You have custom, all, front center, center front, front right, front left, and then off. EQ10 preset. Select enter, off, R&B, rock, pop, dance, hip hop, electronica, jazz, soul, country, custom. We'll get to custom in a minute. Balance, fader, loudness. It has loudness on on and loudness off. Then it'll cycle back around to subwoofer. Select the back arrow to exit and then general settings. Clock adjust, dimmer, optical out, on and off, and then back to clock adjust. Next is going to be Bluetooth settings. You select enter, pairing. Once this is selected, it'll automatically allow you to pair to the device. Auto answer, ringtone on and off. So if you don't want your phone to ring through your stereo, you can select it here. Now, as far as Bluetooth for this radio goes, it will handle a couple different codecs. It'll handle SBC, AAC, and LDAC for high-res audio streaming. One feature that was missing from the sound setting was because we had it on FM. If we select another source, such as USB 1, go back into sound settings, page down, and now you'll see DSEEHX, or Digital Sound Enhancement Engine HX. This improves digital compressed sound by restoring high frequencies lost in the compression process. It basically means it'll allow you to take any form of music you have and make sound a lot better. If you select enter, you can turn it on and off. Once we take this into the car, we'll definitely be playing with this to see how it improves the sound. One other thing that you should know is this has source tone control. You can turn on and off these features and depending on what source you're on, it will remember them specifically for those sources. The other way to control your phone is with the Sony Music Center app, which can be downloaded for either Android or Apple. Once downloaded, it's going to give you 
you all of your sources here on the face of the screen, plus a whole bunch more. It's also gonna ask you to download a second app, which is your advanced car settings app. This is going to control your balance and fader, also your time delay, and your preset seat positions. You must be paired over Bluetooth in order for this to function. When selecting your source, you'll notice up here it will automatically change. If you tap volume up and down, the volume will go up and down, but you'll notice the knob does not move. If you scroll to the bottom, it will give you the choice to go to your advanced car systems, settings. In settings, it says sound, general, and Bluetooth settings. Very similar to what it said using the remote control. Select sound, equalizer off, subwoofer, subwoofer DSD. Subwoofer DSD is grayed out right now because it's only functional when you are playing DSD files. This is basically an overview of all the settings that you did using the remote control. If you select equalizer, you'll notice something different though. An EQ is going to pop up. Here now you have a 10 band EQ. You simply put your finger on the frequency and you can raise and lower and make a custom EQ setting. If you select this drop down menu, here's all your presets. If you'll notice it, it will give you the EQ setting for that specific preset, which will then allow you to go in and modify it, helping you make custom equalization settings much easier. If you select my library, this will allow you to stream music from your phone to the device. And of course, everything changes in this top display anytime you do anything from the phone. Tap the bottom corner and I can control the volume I can also expand out the image and control the volume on the bottom of the page. It gives me my track up and down features as well as my play pause. And there's a back arrow at the top so you can get back to what it is you'd like to do. If listening to the tuner, you can have access to your presets as well as tap the arrows on top and bottom to change the station. Select Bluetooth, it'll allow you to access your phone numbers, which I had turned off, voice call, or redial. So as you can see, this is a fairly robust app to control this radio. Now let's just talk about some of the general technology that's built into this. We've taken the top off of the radio. One of the things that is really quite impressive about this, it, it, it's how much this is actually filled up here. If you've ever seen a modern radio, there's nothing inside of it anymore. And this is full to the top. And that is because it has a rigid dual layer chassis for clean distortion free sound. Normally this would be the CD drive, but it's not. It's actually built this way to separate the circuit boards inside of it for cleaner sound. It is four times as rigid as a regular radio, separating analog and digital circuitry to prevent no Hidden inside of this is the MUSES8920E high-end op amp which provides authentic depth and detail for everything you listen to. Earlier when we were talking about the Bluetooth and we had mentioned LDAC, it has a three times higher bit rate than regular Bluetooth with a sample rate of up to 96 kilohertz. It's pretty impressive. It's definitely not your old school Bluetooth that you're used to. To make sure everything keeps in time with one another, it has a 80 millihertz high precision clock generator which improves conversion accuracy and overall audio stability of the DAC. One other thing stacked in beneath all this is the capacitors. This uses Sony's or high-end audio premium capacitors to provide the high fidelity sound with bright tones. And if you hold this, this, this is heavy. This is one of the heaviest radios even compared to a double din. There is a lot of meat to this radio. To get the high-res music to play back through the mini USB on the front using that Sabre DAC built into the radio, the most popular method is using an iPad iPad running the Onkyo app. You're gonna need a couple parts, which is the Apple camera kit. This gives you the lightning connector on one end and the USB out of this. You can't just come out of the lightning connector into the unit. Once you've bought the app and put it on your iPad, plug your iPad in, and at the top of the screen, you'll notice where it says music and the little icon for the iPad, click on it, come down to where it says file sharing, select the Onkyo app from the side panel. It will sync over and on the right here is gonna be where all the music that you've downloaded to the device is listed. As you can see here on the device. To add new music to it, simply select add. In this case, we're using a SanDisk hard drive that has all our music on it because this does take up a lot of space. So you're not gonna be able to put a ton of music on here unless you buy the biggest iPad possible. We can choose the music we want. In this case, we'll select Journey, the album Escape, and we'll come through and we'll pick one of the songs we like. 
select add. It'll add the file here, and if you cycle through on your device, it will now be located here on your iPad. Add as much music as you have space for. Now a good place to go and get your high res files is online going to hdtracks.com. Here you can purchase all your favorite songs done up in the best quality that they can possibly do. Now it's one thing to just talk about all the features that this radio has in it. It's an impressive list by far. It's another thing to actually sit back and listen to it. And that's where the lab comes into play. For those of you that aren't familiar with the lab, it is Fernando's car and is set up to be a test bench for the equipment that we get in. And that means we're going to put the Sony GS9 into the dash in order for us to evaluate it. So the installation process is complete on the GS9. We have been, been playing with the smartphone app, having all kinds of fun with it. Now it's time to share that fun with you guys. So let's get started. First thing we wanna take you through is just playing regular media files over your phone from the app. Because it has the ultimate Bluetooth built into it, the files actually sound amazing. We're just streaming some downloaded to the phone. The first of which you click my library. This will take you to the music that's on the phone. We'll go to my playlist here and we can scroll up, pick a song. On the radio, it says app. And then it's just gonna default and say app has the source. And you'll notice we have this micro USB plugged in here. That is going off to our camera connection kit for the iPad. And we have the music on the iPad. That as a source. That's gonna be the USB DAC. Click on that. Go over to your iPad and press play. This is where it gets fun. On the screen of the radio, you're going to get the bit rate of the song. So this is a 17632. You can turn that up. Easily go in and grab another track, Back in Black. And now the display has changed to 192.32. Turn it up. With the phone, if you go back, scroll down to settings, come into sound, grab your subwoofer. Right now we have the subwoofer turned all the way down. We can turn that up simply by dragging up and down on the screen. Put it back at zero, select done. <laughs> One thing to note right here, it says settings right now. That's because this app is still open. If we get out of this and go back to our general display, then the screen will go back to displaying USB DAC and of course the bit rate of the music we're listening to. One of the things we wanted to test right away was D-S-E-E-H-X, whether or not that was gonna improve the sound. We've been playing with that and yeah, there's definitely some clarity that comes in the high frequency range that is, it just, it's not overwhelming, but it's there, and it's like, hmm, yeah. You, you, and we're paying attention for it. I think if you were just listening to it naturally, you'd just know there was something that sounds better there, and you'd be like, oh, that's different. The other thing that's weird, on the subwoofer, they have subwoofer for DSD, and it's off or 150 hertz. And that's one of those weird things, too, that it's not, like, overwhelming, but when you turn it on and off, it's like, wait a minute, there's, there's something happening there. And it definitely will sound better with it on as opposed to with it off. But it's very subtle and it's just one of those subtle things that you'd notice but you'd, you you probably would never notice if you just hopped into a car and played it. You'd be like, wow, that just sounds really good. But if you're paying attention to it and you're, and you're A being between the two, you totally hear the difference. There again, it's not for everything. It's why they make on and off buttons for them so you can turn them on and off and have fun with it. This radio, I'm gonna tell you right now, some of you guys are gonna go and you're gonna go and you're gonna go look on the internet and you're gonna be like, oh man, this ain't for everybody. It's okay. But for those of you guys out there that want the best, period, this is the radio for you. It's not a bunch of features, it's not a bunch of flash, it's just clean and sexy, it sounds awesome, that's it. Now we'd love to sit here and listen to a bunch of music with you guys and pretend like you're gonna get it through your headphones when you're listening to this on YouTube, but we know you're not, which means we're gonna end the video here. Now if you have any questions about this radio, by all means, you've asked plenty of them in the videos, so we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. All right guys, as Fernando said, on to the next one. You guys have a wonderful night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.